Hey guys, it's Leslie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Leslie and I am going to be sharing with you guys my third trimester pregnancy symptoms, cravings, all of the juicy stuff and in between. Um, so if you guys want to see how my third trimester went of pregnancy, then please keep on watching. <laughs> Disclaimer, if you guys are wondering why I have the blanket like this and why I'm in this position of being on my bed, it's because I did give birth to my baby girl already and I'm currently breastfeeding her. We're just kind of in a comfy position right here. Um, so yeah, that's the explanation as to why this whole scenario is looking. But let's jump right into the symptoms, the cravings, and touch a little bit about the day I went into labor, when I went into labor, and just get another juicy stuff. So let's just start off first things first with the cravings, just because that's like the smallest list that I have. Cravings, number one. Uh, I was craving a lot of chocolate, and typically I'm not a chocolate craver. And you know, honestly, even last pregnancy, I was craving chocolate as well, like chocolate milk. Um, but for this pregnancy, it was like common things chocolate, like I was craving chocolate muffins, chocolate milk, chocolate cookies, chocolate cake pops, um, just like chocolate drizzle in my Starbucks. Honestly, it got to the point where I was having chocolate like about every night or every other night for me to have as like a late night snack before bed. Um, so I would have like chocolate chip cookies with milk or the chocolate chip muffins with milk or a glass of chocolate milk. And so one, it would just take away the craving, but also it would help with the heartburn that I would have. And so it was just like a two in one combo. So now let's jump into the second category. Second category is symptoms. And so I do have a pretty lengthy list for the symptoms, but let's get into it. I had pain. Girl, let me tell you, I had pelvic pain. And yeah, that was not fun at all. That was the first time I had ever felt pelvic pain. I didn't have any with my last pregnancy. So this was like totally new to me to be having that kind of pain in the groin area. But that definitely hurt. I had no idea that there were like certain things that triggered it and made it worse and then there were ways to relieve the pelvic pain and so it wasn't until i actually looked it up and looked up the ways how to relieve it and what triggered it and then i just took matters into my own hands and tried to ease the pelvic pain and then eventually the pelvic pain not went away but got a lot better compared to when it was like at the height of just peakness pain um and so yeah uh one thing that i did learn though is that your pelvic pain gets worse the more kids you have so here i am with my second kid having this pelvic pain just like uh, not being able to walk properly not being able to sit properly difficulty putting on my shoes difficulty coming up and down the stairs um and taking that into consideration like dang well now i know for the next time I'm gonna have a kid, um, I'm gonna be having this pelvic pain. So yeah, it kind of sucks. Back pain is another, just the obvious back pain because your belly is so big and just my posture wasn't really the best. Like I got big old knockers, big old belly, and I'm just like carrying all that weight on my back. So yes i was having back pain and it was mostly just like lower back pain that i would have and so it got to the point where sometimes i would have to ask my husband to give me massages or just to put like pressure on my back when i was doing my stretches and my yoga I would also be getting knee pain and this would be mostly when i was sleeping in the bed like i would sleep with my pregnancy pillow and i would put the pillow in between my knees um, I would put just like a standard pillow in between my knees, but my knees would still be hurting. Like, I don't know, but it was a kind of pain where I had been in a certain posture for too long and it started affecting my knees. And so just, I was just having pain, girl. 
Another is heartburn. As I mentioned earlier, I would have constant frequent heartburn. And so for that, I would have to take Tums every night with my milk. And the heartburn did show in my daughter because she was born with a pretty decent amount of hair. And so there's a heartburn that I was having. At least I know um, my daughter showed it. <laughs> I would also have shortness of breath, just the obvious. As most pregnant women, you can't really breathe because your whole insides are getting rearranged and moved around by the baby and you're just growing, you don't have a lot of space, and so I would have the shortness of breath and just like cleaning for an extended amount of time would get me short of breath. Going up and down the stairs frequently would get me short of breath. Going outside, honestly, because of how hot it is and humid, I would get short of breath. Walking to and from the store and the car because there mostly was not any close parking, so I had to walk from the grocery store to the car and that would get me short of breath. So yeah, it's just, you can't really breathe when you're in the third trimester. My belly button was an Audi. This one is funny because my son, every time he would see my stomach, he would always just go and like press my belly button. It honestly pretty much looked like a doorbell. I had a doorbell as a belly button um, and my son would just go and like press the doorbell and it just kept going out and out and out and out and it got to the point where even like i would wear clothes and you can see my audi belly button <laughs> through my clothes so yeah that one was funny insomnia was another one it's just really hard for me to sleep really hard for me to get comfortable um just i was not having the best nights of sleep in their trimester uh, just for like other outside factors having to pee constantly, being in body pain, not being comfortable, getting too hot, getting too cold. So yeah, you don't really get much sleep while you're pregnant. And then you don't really get the best sleep after pregnancy, but it's okay. It's all part of the process. Stretch marks was another thing that I was getting on top of the stretch marks that I already had from last pregnancy. And so I was putting on my lotions, my oils, my body butter, but of course being pregnant does come with your body changing. And my daughter did leave me some beautiful stretch marks. And so it was just adding on to the collection, you know, part of being a mother and motherhood and pregnancy. And I don't really mind having the stretch marks to be honest, um, I just added more stripes. So that was pretty much it. These two go in hand and that is constipation with hemorrhoids. Um, I was constipated even though I would be drinking my hydration, um, but just, I don't know, I would get constipated and I did have a couple of hemorrhoids. Um, I had two. And so in one of my OB appointments, I went, told my doctor and thankfully they were able to prescribe me some medication for it to ease it and kind of gave me just like hemorrhoid education and how to prevent getting the hemorrhoids and then what to do if and when I got the hemorrhoids. And so, because I had already gotten hemorrhoids last pregnancy, I kind of already had an idea on what to do on my own for when I got the hemorrhoids. And so that was just like applying witch hazel, taking stool softener, soaking in a warm bath with Epsom salt. I did not have any hemorrhoids leading up to labor and I did not have any hemorrhoids during labor and even now postpartum, no hemorrhoids. So I'm so glad for that would also have difficulty driving and that is just because of the posture that you're at um while driving like i would literally have to be sitting so straight like that is the most straight that i sit while driving um and that's at the end of my pregnancy just because i feel like so uncomfortable i feel like i can't breathe because of my lung placement and my stomach placement and so I do get very particular when driving super pregnant. 
and so it would just be hard driving and just sitting in the passenger just sitting in the car in general was difficult another thing that was difficult was putting my shoes on and to add to that with the pelvic pain and all the other pain that i was having it was just hard to put on my shoes and so i would have to sit down at a chair and put on my shoes but of course you can't just like bend straight directly down you gotta have your legs open and you're just like bending down adjusting to your stomach at the same time also had braxton hicks contractions and man those really do play with your emotions and play with your feelings because you like start getting these cramps and you're just trying to decide and you're debating in your head like okay is this real is this not real do i pay attention to it do i ignore it what do i do do i relax and lay in bed or do i get up and start being active to keep these contractions going and so i did have these contractions for honestly over like a week span and so i was just not really sure when this baby was gonna come out if she was gonna come out on her own um and so i was having these braxton hicks and there were a few moments where i really did think like dang she could possibly honestly come today or within the next 24 hours but she did not and it wasn't until real labor that i noticed the difference and so braxton hicks you are just like such a liar such a faker such a two-faced um such a trickster that's what i have to say to you braxton hicks you are not fun because you're just teasing us moms but at the end of the day i got the real contractions and i got my baby girl <laughs> last but not least i would have the lightning oh man oh man the lightning is just like a sharp short pain that you would get in your very low stomach pretty much your groin area pain that you get so randomly and like literally i'll be getting up from sitting down or laying down boom lightning i'll be walking to and from the store boom lightning i'll be cleaning washing the dishes doing household chores boom lightning like i don't even know what causes the lightning or how to relieve the lightning pain but all i know is it was so random honestly i never thought to look it up but i would just get the random lightning pain and each time i would have to be like "Ooh," and like hold on let me just compose myself make sure that this is not gonna continue longer than what it was and then yeah once the pain and whatever the moment would pass then i'd be like okay let's go back to a regularly scheduled program because that was a no-no all right now let's talk about my very last two ob appointments so i'm just going to give you a little insight on what led up to my labor kind of i'm not going to go much into depth or depth at all about my labor and delivery experience that'll be a whole separate video a whole separate story on its own so you're gonna have to stay tuned to watch that video it will be coming up but for now we're going to talk about my 39 ob appointment and my 40 ob appointment so at my 39 weeks ob appointment i did say yes to the membrane sweep and i did get a membrane sweep last pregnancy and it did not work my son did not come out within that time frame of possibly going into labor and i actually had to get induced with my son at 41 weeks pregnant and so because of the membrane sweep not working last pregnancy i was really iffy leading up to the 39 week appointment about getting the membrane sweep because it didn't work for me last time and so i was like what are the chances that it's gonna work with this baby for the same body and so just long story short um i ended up getting the membrane sweep and girl that was like very uncomfortable it hurt um obviously it was not the most painful but it did hurt 
Um, and it was because my OB explained it to me that pretty much my uterus was like high and she had to pull it kind of down um, and she was really thorough with the membrane sweep and while she was checking up in there she did check my cervix and I was two centimeters dilated and she was saying that my cervix was soft and that it was thinning out and so I was making progress um, but we just weren't really sure and how soon baby girl was gonna come but my OB was feeling really positive and really optimistic that I was not gonna have to get induced again for this pregnancy and so after that OB appointment I was feeling really hopeful um, and she was just telling me to look out for like any little bit of vaginal blood that could be coming out or discharge or my mucus plug educated me on the signs of labor educated me on the signs to come to the emergency room and then gave me all of the tips as she had already been doing in naturally inducing labor which was walking um having mommy and daddy time doing exercises on the yoga ball stretches eating six dates a day staying hydrated and doing breast slash nipple stimulation and i had already been doing those since i believe 38 weeks or something like that it was just very close in time of the 39 week appointment that i was doing all of this stuff like as a whole um, and so she said for me to just literally keep doing what I was doing and to not slack off don't take any time off and if I keep doing as she's saying literally her notes um, then baby girl would be coming out on her own next three days after that my mucus plug actually did come out and you can look up pictures on Google but pretty much to describe it to you, it's like a mucus-like texture. It's stringy, it's gooey. Um, mine was like a yellowish color to a little bit of red. Um, and I knew it, that it was my mucus plug because my mucus plug had actually came out um, with my son um, the last time I was pregnant. And so I, as soon as I seen it, I already knew that it was my mucus plug. And so the mucus plug just kept coming out within those next three days. After that, no mucus plug came out and the obvious, the membrane sweep did not put me into labor. And so that was that week. Now we're at the 40 week um, OB appointment. And this is where things sparked and I feel it really kicked off for me to go into labor. So the 40 week appointment comes up and my doctor offers me a membrane sweep again, which I didn't know that you can get a membrane sweep more than once. And so once she informed me that she could do another membrane sweep, I took it and for long story short, um, I decided to get it again, took that chance once again. And while she was doing my membrane sweep, this was, a lot less uncomfortable and not painful at all this one was a lot better it was just a lot smoother and easier and so while she was all up in there she checked my cervix and she said that i was actually four centimeters dilated and again my cervix was soft it was thinning and i was really really happy and relieved to hear my progress that i was making at 40 weeks and so she was telling me that we were making progress, that things are moving, things are happening, um, that baby's head was down, that she had been ready since 39 weeks, um, and that she was already like relatively low. And so same thing, she told me um, what I could expect after the membrane sweep, uh, what are the reasons to go to the emergency room, what are the signs of real labor and just educated me once again on the ways to naturally induce myself and so again she was being positive and optimistic that i wasn't gonna have to get induced 
but for mine and my husband's sake, we did actually set up an induction date. And I told her um, that for long story short, we wanted to set up an appointment to get induced and pretty much to sign us up for the earliest convenience open time um, for me to get induced and so before we walked away we had set up that appointment and I even got a confirmation paper and spoiler we did not make it to our induction appointment because at that point I was already five days postpartum and so thankfully with plan of the universe and everything falling into place um, I had my daughter naturally all on our own and we didn't have to go to our induction appointment and so back on track <laughs> um after the appointment um this was on a monday so by the time i had seen the doctor and she did all that fun stuff we talked vented to her a little bit this was maybe like 3 4 p.m ish um by the time that all of this was happening and so after that, I really was on the ball of like, okay, this is my last week. I have an induction appointment, but I really don't want to get to that point. Um, and I really, really am going to be strict on myself to get this baby out naturally and on my own. Because like I said, I really just did not want to get induced again. I already had that experience. It was its own thing. I had my son, my beautiful, healthy son. Um, and I just didn't want to go through that experience again, personally, just from how that experience went. And so I, we left the doctor's appointment and we were driving home and I'm like, you know what? My family is here, um, from California, um, uh, staying with us in Louisiana. They were at home with our son and me and my husband were driving home from the hospital together and I told him that I wanted to go on a walk but because of the weather we couldn't walk outside so I'm like let's go to the gym and I want to walk on the treadmill because I really do like need to get on it I really need to make this my homework um, and I need to focus on it every single day and make sure every single thing on this list is getting checked off for me to have this baby naturally and so we went to the house and I had my mom and my sisters come with me to the gym while my husband, stepdad, brother, and our son <laughs> stayed back at the house. So pretty much all the girls went to the gym and all the boys stayed at home. And we went to the gym. I walked on the treadmill for a whole hour and I did two miles of walking. I did do a stop in between. So at the 30 minute mark, I stopped to use the bathroom, went back. And I continued walking and I was not going at a slow pace. I was going at a pace enough for me to get like just a nice little sweat kind of going through. Um, it wasn't like power walking, but it was enough for me to just stay at a steady pace and to feel a little bit of the cramps while I was walking. So then after that, we come home and I'm on my ball. I'm sitting on my ball and I'm just like... Um, doing the movements of opening up my hips and then I grabbed my haka pump and I was just like putting it on my breast and I believe I put it for like about 15 minutes each breast with the haka pump and then from there I was doing floor stretches I had been doing uh, stretches to relieve my back open up my hips um, and just kind of focusing in on my breathing while doing the stretches. And then the last thing that I had did was a warm bath and just sitting in the tub for about 20 minutes. I had put Epsom salt, my essential oils to really just relax myself. And with all of that combined together, a positive mindset and one pregnant driven mother, by the end of that night, Literally, by the end of that night, I was in labor and having contractions. And so we're just going to leave it at that. To hear the full labor and delivery story, then you're going to have to stay tuned, like I said, to watch my next video. Um, it will be coming out soon. I just haven't had the time, okay? I'm 
here with a newborn baby and a toddler and the rest of my family is in the house so it's been a little hamster ball is rolling around um but we're getting there but okay that's gonna be it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed if you did please be sure to like comment and subscribe i would really much appreciate it and if you guys have been enjoying me sharing my pregnancy journey and now getting into being a mother of two then stay tuned because more content is going to be getting pushed out if you want to follow along on my other platforms i do post on instagram tiktok and facebook and i do share a little bit of different content on there but it's still similar content to what i post here on youtube other than that i will see you guys in my next video